Hi, I'm Ira Winey from Intel. Um, Navneet uh, should be on the call. He's also from Intel, and Jonathan has had a lot of input on DCD over the years, although I don't think he's going to speak today. We, not about this. Not, not about this. Um, Navneet, are you there? Hey, hey, hey folks, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, great. So I'm gonna go over some of the current patch set that I've been pushing upstream for the last two years. Oh, you have something? Sure to, we have it. Okay, we're just uh, making sure we have the cube to toss around. Um, and uh, discuss some of the things. We had a quick little uh, boff yesterday uh, to discuss some of the tag handling and whatnot, which is, a which is significantly part of what my talk was gonna be about. Um, so I'm gonna kind of briefly, quickly move through what we discussed yesterday what the patch set status is right now. I really apologize, this should have been version two, but right in the middle of sending version two, my SMTP server conked out on me, then I had some issues with V4, and eventually I just sent V3 because it just, and so anyway, the patch set is V3. Um, so far the comments have been kind of mild, um, but we do have some changes that we wanna make. Uh, along with the kernel support, I've been developing the NDCTL support uh, to support DCD, to be able to create regions, to see extents in those, in those regions. Um, and uh, very importantly, I've mentioned a couple of times CXL tests. So we've been developing a lot of CXL tests uh, to, and it's been very helpful. I can't, uh, I can't stress enough how helpful it's been to basically be able to regress things as I make changes, as we've changed the architecture, we've been updating the tests to make sure that the semantics that we've discussed and changed over the years have, uh, have been reflected in those tests. Um, the Quimu support, thank you to Fan who uh, got that working and Jonathan for getting it upstream. Um, I do test a little bit with Quimu, but mainly for uh, interrupt support because that's the thing that CXL tests just can't uh, test. Um, at the last uh, discussion forum, the monthly meeting that uh, Jonathan just mentioned, um, tag support was uh, really important to a number of our users that are looking to use this. And so we had a discussion there and that's why I focused my talk a little bit on that tag support and where we, how we should go forward. Um, and since V3, I went ahead and added uh, QoS support um, after I submitted that patch set. So those, uh, the QoS um, parameters are also reflected uh, in the regions, just like a regular CXL region is now. Uh, with that though, the SysFS entries had to change slightly, so if people are using V3, just be aware that a SysFS change is, is going to be coming. Um, post, V3 in V3. post V3. So yeah, so what's in V3 has kind of the old SysFS entries uh, and then the new SysFS entries. So there's a little bit of change in the directory structure um, and, and the way extents are, uh, um, are seen in, that, in the SysFS directory structure. So just want to make people aware of that. Um, for me, I keep kind of advocating that DCD should not be system RAM. And then of course, this morning on Discord, there was a little bit of a discussion. <laughs> And so I'll kind of skip over this slide, but I, I really think that we need as a community to figure out for sure, how do we get memory on and offline for VMs, for user, all kinds of different user space applications where we want to be able to take that memory away. Uh, DCD is sort of hot plug, but I, I'm going to say it's a uh, hot plug light. And uh, did you have a, question or comment, we can yeah. throw that. Right. Uh, I did a bit of experiment with some actual device and found that results I got make me question whether it's useful to treat it unconditioned as system RAM. So primarily due to the latency of which, which unfortunately is good meaning it's in my test case, it was even better than talking to the other Numa node, which makes it a bit unfortunate because it messes up all our algor algorithms which we have. 
I'd be fine if we had a higher latency, then we could clearly separate things out and say, right, okay, it has a higher latency, don't use it, fine. But if it has a lower latency, da, you start end up moving device memory over to CXL and then having to, whatever, go via CXL to talk to the device. Good idea. So um, keep in mind, so whatever we design, it's heavily dependent on the latency of that beast, which we don't know yet, because that what I'm running with is pretty much experimental. But I suspect we or others will run into the same problem. So be aware of that. I, okay, I, yeah, I, I totally agree with you, but I think it's up to the admin and the policy of the user, if they, if they want to online into system memory because it is more performant, that's great. But if you do that, you will not be able to take it away. And for DCD in particular, where our use cases are memory is going to come and go, it's going to be very hard to take it away. And a number of our customers have, have been saying, oh, well, we want to online into system memory, but, but you might not be able to take it away. So it kind of breaks the DCD use case. Well, they just want to online it as a system because they have no other means talking to it. It's they, not necessarily they want to use it as memory, they want to use it. But the only way they can use it is called malloc. Well, well there's other ways. Well, the, yeah. Yeah, 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 but that requires okay. them to change their application and uh, rather push the honors on us, let them do the work than me, right? And so that, that is something we should, no, oh, uh, pass it forward. Give like a show of hands of how many people have alternate to malloc based memory allocation applications. Okay. <laughs> really the question. The question becomes, are people able to replace the memory allocator that's providing the malloc? Uh, which is a totally different thing. So you will still use malloc typically, but it'll be based on top of one of the, should we say smarter allocators that's aware of these things. One of the concerns is, is device stacks has been around for a long time. I'm not aware, uh, we had PMDK, which was an allocator, like a JE malloc allocator in, fr in front of that, so you could get your malloc semantics back. I'm just not aware of another uh, project that's doing device stacks backed memory allocation. Right, and uh, I'll be talking about FAMFS later, but it's a way of putting data sets in memory, memory mapping them, accessing them directly. And Anyway, okay, I, I should have skipped that slide. But I, 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 think it's, I think it's a hot topic, and I think it's something that going forward I, I would like to work on if I can just get this patch set and kind of the basic support at the driver level. Because if you look at the patch set right now, there's about 12 or so patches that are just getting the driver running, accessing the memory, surfacing extents, and there's a little bit in the, there's like three or four patches in the DAX layer to kind of get that off the ground. Um, and then and then test code. So um, so anyway. So extent handling. This is the current state. Every extent, whether it has a tag or not, and and actually this is in flux because I just started changing it this morning. Um, will you can create a DAX de device across those extents? The the extents are just added capacity to the region, and they will continue to take as much memory as they need. Um, and there's no, there's really ignore, we really ignore tags. On our discussion yesterday, we really didn't like that. So we did have a couple of possible dis, uh, uh, scenarios that, that I proposed in this slide and I updated my slides this morning to cross out a couple of options because we discussed them yesterday. Um, and so what we really wanna do is right now in V4 now will be to just reject tags. Um, the current support, base level support, will be no tags. It'll be basically regions will be created in, as non-tagged regions and the uh, uh, extents will be surfaced. Any extent with a tag will be rejected as not supported yet. And so that'll create a semantic that um, our current regions, our current DAX devices are basically untagged. In future, when we create the ability to add a tag to our DAX device and specify we want this tag, we can then go on to this scenario where extent A, I've got a couple of scenarios here that don't work, so we want D DAX device A is bigger than extent A, that fails. DAX device with tag Z, there is no tag Z, so that would fail. DAX device tag B is only allocated out of extent B. And so 
you know, once we get the support for DAX devices to be tagged, or if we have some other um, non-DAX thing, we'll, we'll, we'll need to come up with the ability to assign tags so that when you create this memory access to a tag, it will, be, it, will, it will look for that tag and it will assign the memory out of the, those extents with that tag. Um, Dan is giving me con consternation <laughs> looks, so, yes. Like the, the tag is on the extent. The tag is on the extent. Why do we, I mean, like, the association of, of extent to DAX device, you can, the user should be able to say, yes, this, this DAX device is a single tag, this device, this device is a multi tag. Um, like, like if, if, the, if the DAX region is allocating, is in, in charge of allocating extents to DAX, DAX devices, and we have a user interface for that, if the user wants to mix multiple tags in a DAX device, why would we stop them? Like, why are we rejecting people's usable capacity? Well, well yeah, Be because, because of him. <laughs> so if a tag is a namespace to memory, um, I know, but it, that's how we're going to use it. I mean, that's what we put it there for. Um, and so the reason you can have more than one extent with the same tag is because you might not have been able to allocate that memory contiguous. And so, and Andy Rudolph and I put this in here, the extents that are tagged have a mandatory sequence number so that you have to map them in order, because you do have to map them in order if it's a shareable thing, right? Well, yeah. I thought the mandate was only if it's shareable, like where it actually matters. You know, you know, the ordering doesn't matter if it's not shared, right? Uh, right, and the tag field is reserved, or sorry, the sequence number field is reserved if it's not shareable. I argued it should be sequenced anyway, but, you know. Um, but tags are a namespace to specific memory, so. So that's the semantic we're going to go on. Okay, so I was a little bit on in your camp. That's the way V3 is, is that a untagged DAX device is basically give me any memory. But that does have some semantic issues with, and, 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 and maybe, maybe we will need to do something where we can create a DAX device that is generic, like, uh, how do I say this? Um, there might be a difference between a zero tag device and an untagged device, although semantic, although implementation wise, that's going to be difficult to, to discern. But, um, in, so in my mind, I was kind of in the camp of, you know, an untagged DAX device just gets memory from anywhere. Uh, we've got another comment back there. And, uh. I, I think for the un, for the shared case, we have to use we have to be able to restrict the allocations in either case because otherwise we're running in a starvation issue. If it's shared, we do have two independent actors trying to allocate memory, and we really do want to avoid one being starved, come what may. So in the shared at the very least in the shared case, we need to be able to restrict one and say no, you can't. The other has to whatever has right. also had to have a chance to do it. So right. Right. So no matter what, a, an enhancement on top of this patch set is going to be to have to allocate a tag to a DAX device so that that DAX device can be matched up only with those extents. Only if it's shared. I mean, it, it makes sense if it's shared because you have to. But if you don't have to, then why restrict things? Because the user asked for it. Because it was for if, purpose. If, if the user says, I want this DAX device to only be allocated from these tags, I'll, I'll do that, right? Um, but, but you're advocating if we don't have a tag, if we don't assign a tag to a DAX device, it just gets memory from anywhere. An example of memory for a purpose would be memory that was allocated to be the backing memory for a VM. And so that's for a purpose. I tagged it so that my orchestrated environment knows what memory the VM should be backed by. And then it, it's got to show up as one DAX device. We, we probably I mean, need a wildcard tag that could say, you know, that we could say allocate from anywhere. But, but I think that that, I think it just came into my head. So like tag zero is maybe like untagged. Uh, 
and 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 v3 and then maybe we do a wild card tag in the future where maybe people are surfacing tags but they have some use case where they don't really need to to lock it down to any particular use case but <laughs> Is the tag, well, we, we should move on, but is, is yeah. the tag enumerable from the extent? What do you mean, seen yeah. in user space? Yeah. Yes, okay. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the other way to look at this is... I, I want this to all be user space policy. Mm. It's just the kernel has to honor, we have to make the right levers. But user space is going to handle all of the policy here, absolutely. The other thing is what we need to be very careful of is that we don't restrict something we enable initially. So if it turns out that we do need to ensure that tag, different tags are not used in the same DAX device for use cases, we can't do that retrospectively. So we're better off being too restrictive initially, sitting back, thinking about it a little bit, um, we've, and once we've got tag capacity in there, then thinking, oh, okay, yeah, it does make sense right. to generalize it. rather than And so kind of around. define current DAX devices as tag zero. And then if in the future we want to wildcard them, I think we could define like all Fs as, you know, wildcard tag allocate from anywhere. And that's another reserve tag. Maybe we, re you know, reserve, tag zero is reserved now kind of in the spec, but yeah. Okay, so that took a little bit longer than I expected. Um, let's see here. Uh, Navneet, do you want to, I know there's some folks that want to talk about fabric manager, orchestrator, so I was going to let Navneet discuss that a little bit. Thanks, Adam. So uh, this slide is uh, more specific to DCD as a product point of view, where uh, you know, uh, we have the orchestrator, uh, we have fabric managers, some sort of daemon service, like uh, we, call it, we can call it as the orchestrator or the host agent on the host. So uh, to communicate to each other in you know, adding the or releasing the memory, right? So. Uh, as, so if you see the uh, figure on the right hand side, right, this is the basic flow of the DCD. Uh, we have a CXL, uh, uh, CXL fabric manager talking to the CXL memory. Uh, there's a predefined, I would say well-defined interface to add and release the memory, right? And then we all aware of how memory has been, uh, you know, or uh, has been populated in the host as X10, right? But the main problem here is uh, we have been doing uh, this whole allocation using some of the scripts from the fabric manager, right? But when we see things from a uh, you know, bigger scheme of things, right, we need some sort of orchestrator or the host agent on the host who can talk to, uh, which can talk to orchestrator. And also we need some sort of plugin in the orchestrator which can talk to fabric manager. Right. So uh, let's say uh, we have a host and uh, uh, we are running some workload. We are running uh, out of memory or they. Navneet, do we lose you? What? How? Hey, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't touch anything. <laughs> Stay back here. <laughs> okay, I, I don't know till where you have heard me, uh, but let me start again. Okay, so... Uh, Go ahead. Uh, uh, shall I do it? Yeah, no, no, continue. Okay. So, uh, as I've mentioned that, uh, there's a well-defined interface between the CXL fabric manager and the CXL memory to initiate the add and release memory. And also, uh, we have the driver implemented uh, to uh, surface this memory as an extent. But the onus lies to the user to uh, create the DCD region, uh, to add the uh, extent as a DevDex device uh, when it is not required, destroy it, right? So in the bigger scheme of things, right, we need some sort of uh, orchestrator or the host agent or the you, uh, on, the, uh, on the host which can basically detect the memory pressure uh, or, you know, uh, if there's no memory pressure, then, uh, you know, it can talk to the orchestrator uh, to add and release the memory, right? So let's say if we have a workload which is running on the host and uh, there's a memory pressure on the host and there's a need of additional memory, which is elastic memory from the pool, then uh, this host agent can talk to the orchestrator and say that, yeah, I need X amount of memory. 
right? So some sort of uh, uh, service or daemon is required uh, to do uh, particularly uh, do the things like detect the memory pressure. Uh, who can decide whether we can create one extent per DAX or multiple extent per DAX, right? If it is a shared, then uh, generate the tag, communicate to the orchestrator that, you know, please request the memory with this tag, right? It can also uh, create the mapping, uh, uh, I would say the create the DCD regions uh, and set the right set of interleaving uh, configurations and so on, right? And uh, when it comes to the orchestrator, right? Uh, because uh, CXL memory uh, fabric manager can be implemented as a ratfish or maybe some other way. So there's some sort of interface required in the orchestrator to talk to fabric manager and it can uh, use that interface to uh, to raise the request for the uh, for to add or release the memory right so uh, so basically uh, if we see a bigger scheme of things where we have multiple hosts connected to the memory pool these are the missing pieces of software right that we need to stitch to get the whole uh, you know this functionality as a uh, you know product point of view we should be careful trying not yeah. to overthink here because the experience shows reconfiguring a host is an event which, well, at least with our customers, doesn't happen that often. One could even say it does not happen at all. Um, there's the classic example of the HP Superdome back in them days, which was fully reconfigurable on the fly. You could do everything you could think of with that thing on the fly. The next release, they turned off completely. No one was using it. Point is that for these kind of applications or these kind of things, it doesn't come cheap. So you won't find them in your user, whatever, handheld devices, laptop, you name it. It will be in the, primarily in, in the enterprise. And in the enterprise, you buy the systems designed for that specific task. You lay out pre, a prior this is the task I'm running. I need this and this and this, whatever capacity, memory, you name it, by the system designed for that task. Full stop. You're not going to read. I mean, Are, if yeah. you were to redesign, it's not that often. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you, but I do feel and so, that. But, and uh, so that's one thing. The other one is to, if you start doing a dynamic feedback loop, please give me more memory, memory and so on and so forth. You're not the only one. You will be competing with others to having the very same feedback loop. So again, there might be a chance you will not get your memory. Right. Which means, right, where's the difference for not getting the memory initially? Not that much, because we can't be sure. So shouldn't we rather invest, or shouldn't we rather concentrate on getting the things off the ground first, having some offline interface via Redfish, get it stabilized, and then worry whether we can implement a feedback loop? Agreed for the feedback loop. Absolutely. Navneet, did you get that? Right. right. Uh, so, so, so as, as somebody who worked, oh, one more question. Uh, well, I, actually, I want to just respond to, to, as someone who worked at HP on Superdome, I have perhaps a little bit of insight into this, which is that um, customers did not trust the ability of Superdome to be reconfigured. <laughs> and uh, we, 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 we asked them why, and they said, when your service engineers start believing in it, we'll start believing in it. <laughs> okay. No comment from that. But um, um, what, what, I, what I do want to say is that I think the the reconfigurability that we do see today is very much in virtualized environments. Right. And so if customers are going to start treating this kind of physical environment like it's a virtualized environment in terms of, oh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll squeeze this machine down to its minimum configuration and then we'll expand it when demand increases, then maybe we'll start to see this. But I, I, I think that's much more a thing for virtual environments. It's not so much a thing for physical environments. Maybe that will change. I don't personally see it. I, I, I think you're right. I think the, the, the vast majority are going to set it, configure it, leave it alone. I think it's a matter of cost, though. I think we're seeing more customers in the data center who want to be able to dynamically adjust their memory in their machines across their data center. So, uh, one of the classic okay. cases. Okay, is, uh, and, and I think you're right about the feedback loop and the automation there where we need to, we need to crawl before we run, walk, run. 
totally agree with that. So actually, I was going to make a ask, are there anybody working on a user space host to manage this stuff? I know there's fabric manager people, but is anybody looking at the actual interfaces that I'm implementing? You, maybe, a little? OK. OK, so almost no, nobody raised their hand. So somebody probably at some company, hopefully. All right, well. OK. Uh, go ahead, Naveen. Uh, uh, I think uh, the main question comes here is on the orchestrator side, if anybody has started looking into the interfaces to the uh, fabric manager. I, th I think there have been people who are working on the orchestrator fabric manager, right? Okay. Okay. And are you all on the mailing list? I mean, this is, this is, I mean, even though it's user space, you know, the mailing list doesn't have to be only for the kernel. We, we have, you know, our utilities and other things, Quimu uh, discussions. So, you know, if, if you want to fire that up and get in touch with Namneet and start to talk about these things, we'd love to, we'd love to hear that feedback. Okay. I think ugh, my watch keeps. What do you read out? Uh, actually, I think we're out of time. Oh. We left a bit of time. You maybe five more minutes. Okay, we got five more minutes. Did you want to wrap up, Navni? Uh, that's, that's all from my side. Thanks, folks. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think we should continue this discussion. Um, you know, on our our communication channels. Um. Because it, 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 it is a system, and I'm, I'm just trying to get one piece of the system done. Um, so future support, I already did the QoS stuff. Uh, Navneet has been working on interleaving a little bit, but we, we've, we've kind of deprioritized that, again, to just get the basic support in. Um, mapping a tag is lens, we've, we've, done, we've talked about that. Um, Splitting and merging extents, I don't think that's ever going to get done. I, I kind of added it here because it, we've, we've discussed it in the past as a future task. I, I don't hear anybody saying they really want to be able to uh, see the kernel be able to split an extent or merge an extents. Um, correct, right. So it, Agreed. So, so the, the, the comment was that we kind of already split extents and tag through the, the ability to have a single tag with sequence numbers. We can have uh, multiple extents that are already really part of the same unit. And more importantly, we have our DAX layer that we can then combine or use part of extents all we want. So even though the spec allows you to allocate extents down to a very, um, as John said, you know, like like very, very small unit that's un almost unusable, um, we're not really going to support that. I mean, the, the kernel will honor it if an extent is, if a small extent is surfaced, but we're not going to try to combine it into bigger extents or split big extents into little extents. Um, and, and then we have been throwing around the idea of doing something a little bit different than um, DAX devices. Um, kind of gets back into uh, whether we should online a system memory or not. Um, and, and so I, I need to explore those options a little bit more and understand them better once I get the basic support done. Okay, that's, that's okay. Um, if at all possible, we should stick to the existing DAX device in the in infrastructure. Okay. Because um, while it wasn't perfect, I'd be the first to admit, and the hardware was crap. Um, there are customers. <laughs> <laughs> Just take it, Dan. Just accept it. Why do you laugh if I say there are customers? Anyway, um, <laughs> so, and who happens to have been using the existing interface for good or worse? Which means, here. sorry? Yeah. Customers here. Here. Right. We have customers here. Do we have customers? Right. No, uh, none of those are here. I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. Um, so, and if we were sticking to the existing interface, they could just use the existing framework with they have, and it would work with, with TXL. 
that will make the adoption of CXL far easier for everyone involved because they will only have to have well, very little tweaks to the application to get it off the ground, uh, ground with CXL. We can stick to the existing interface or can just whatever, malleable um, the interface to do whatever it needs, it's needed there. So the adoption will be far easier. If we now start to move things around and do things differently, people will have to, start, uh, to change the application doing that, thereby delaying the adoption or even at worst saying, oh, you know what, well, DAX was crap, we are not going to invest in that one because you mess up again. Right, and that's why I'm, I'm targeting DAX initially, but, I, but, I, but to get back to your earlier comments, we, we do kind of need a better way to be able to online system memory and offline system memory. And so that is a much harder problem to solve, but I think that going forward, we, we can probably do better. And I, I don't want, Okay. Oh, we're, I've got a stop sign. <laughs> okay, we're done. Last, but last comment. <laughs> why, why do you say that onlining system RAM is, is a harder problem? We already have memory hot plug. Because hot plug isn't a guarantee to be able to release. It's, it's, it, it might work, but what we're looking with DCD use cases is it must work. We must be able to take the memory back. Yeah. Uh, Dan said that uh, just tell people they can't get their memory back, that's it. Well, that's what I'm telling them if they online it as system memory is you're not going to get it back. So please don't do that, which was the other slide that was controversial. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway. Okay. Well, thank you.